can you do a load balance same as application load balancer the difference is we don't have a listeners rule. we have a listeners rule only one listener rule so we cannot create multiple rule for example path based host header based or uh, ip based or uh, then we have uh, different rules right code string based so we don't have many rules so we have only one rule what is what is that listener rule okay so when you access in the load, um, network load balancer ip address it will go to that page only okay so let me create so creating a load balancer you have to go to load balancer page select your load balancer so i'll go to load balancer select load balancer you can see that already i have a my application load balancer right i'm going to create one more load balancer that is a network load balancer and create a load balancer so we have a three types as we discussed application network and gateway and uh, classic it's already deprecated see previous generation it is same as application load balancer but add up more feature with application load balancer that's what actually they supplanted with application load balancer see previously we were using classic load balancer instead of application load balancer so now application load balancer having more features uh, like rather than this classic load balancer you getting that's what if i go to classic load balancer you will be get one see AWS will be retiring the EC2 Classic network on August 15, 2022. Retiring in the sense that is already terminated. Okay, so we will not get much support from AWS for Classic Load Balancer. But even though you have to understand the concept and all, so that is using UDP, TCP, and HTTP, HTTP, HTTPS, SSL protocol as well. Okay, so let me go to my uh, network load balancer. Okay, so what is the use case of network load balancer? Eh? Okay, high performance. See that you can see over here. See, choose a network load balancer when you need ultra high performance. Okay, so if, if you want sub millisecond response, okay, if you want to enhance your latency capacity or lat you want to reduce your latency, then we will go th go with the network load balancer. Not only that, suppose if you want to create VPC endpoint, so this is VPC endpoint. Okay, suppose if you want to connect between two VPC endpoint, then we have to use uh, which load balancer? Network load, network load balancer. Okay. So at that time you have to use network load balancer. I'll, I'll show you that. I'll go to my uh, VPC. Let me show you that because at least you'll be get some clarity on it. I'll go to VPC. So we already discussed VPC and VPC endpoints and all, right? So we have one more service, VPC endpoint service. Okay. In left side, you can see that uh, we have a blade endpoint services right i will just click on endpoint services so let me just try to create an endpoint service so here you can see that we have only two options what is it network, network, network and gateway load balancer right so if you're getting this question what is the purpose of network load balancer so that we can use for sub millisecond response if you want high ultra performance we can go with the network load balancer or else to connect vpc endpoints so we have only one option that is our network load balancer. So gateway load balancer, the purpose is we can connect between network virtual appliances. We'll discuss that. Okay. Just write it on if you want. Okay. So we don't have any option over here. Application load balancer. Application load balancer, the purpose is if you have any dynamic application and you want to route the traffic from user to that load balancer, then only we will use the application load balancer. So that's what we have a copious uh, like a routing path over there. Okay. Anyway, let me create a network load balancer. To create, you have to click on create. Okay, so select a network load balancer name. I'll give a name, uh, for example, NLB. Uh, new, we can provide any name and we have a two types. So what is the difference between internet facing and private? Public. public, which means, so this is publicly accessible. Anybody can access, okay, publicly. Same as a public IP address. What about internal? Private, within a private local network we can access, okay? Same as a private IP address. So come down, it is uh, supporting IPv4 and dual stack. What is a dual stack? IPv4. Both IPv4, IPv6, that is called dual stack, okay? So network mapping, we can select one VPC <coughs> and two subnets. So we have to select at least two subnets, right? Then only it will work, okay? At least two subnets we have to select, okay? And... Uh, not only at least two subnet, at least two available zone you have to select, okay? So select your target group, I don't have any target group, okay? So while you're creating target group, one thing you have to make ensure, you have to provide TCP protocol, okay? See, previously we were giving HTTP or HTTPS protocol, right? So here we have to give TCP protocol, create a target group. 
so then i will select instance the same options and uh, we will select uh, target name as nlb tg nlb tg what is the protocol automatically it's added so i want to select https is it possible so that also possible okay but while you doing health check see health check protocol only support tcp okay so then i'll go to advanced okay advanced health checking protocol then i'll just move this to to so make me this everything is 2 and 3 2 12 5 next so i created a virtual machine sorry i created a target group right so i will add this home page virtual machine include as pending below so create a target group so successfully done uh, this is my nlb target group i'll go to my load balancer refresh and select your nlb target group then create a load balancer view load balancer and you can see the what is the state how many state we have what are our in bed failed so keep in mind okay because if you getting question at least you can stick on 5 minutes you can explain 5 minutes right if you know all the concept we have how many rule and what is the purpose of load balancer previously actually uh, we don't have any idea but what is the purpose of network load balancer what is the purpose of gateway load balancer okay so we should have a thorough knowledge on it why we using network load balancer you will be get a question see already we have a load balancer right then why should we have a three load balancer four load balancer what is the purpose definitely so that load balancer will be have a unique purpose right so that's what they created so that we have to understand so uh, let's wait for active then we'll try see same as application load balancer you can see that we got a dns name right and one more thing here you can see that we don't have any security group right see we don't have any security group but we have a subnets and a delete protection what is the delete protection can anyone we can uh, we can protect our load balancer from unnecessary deletion for example some uh, user is logging to aws account and they are trying to delete our load balancer so we can protect by enabling this attribute so click on edit attribute then we can enable this attribute so nobody can delete your load balancer until unless remove this enabled okay so we have a cross zone load balancing what is it zone for example i have a available zone a and available zone b in available zone a you have a two instances available zone b you have a two two instances okay so automatically it will balance the load okay when you getting traffic first it will go to available zone 1 then it will go to available zone 2 automatically it will balance the traffic see by default in network load balancer it is disabled you getting but when you come to application load balancer that is enabled so note it down in application load balancer az rebalance that is by default enabled application load balancer okay but in network load balancer az rebalance by default that is disabled we have to enable that az means availability zone rebalance what is access lock what is access lock eh? see who is accessing your load balancer and what they are requesting for example they are requesting for an image videos they are requesting for some applications okay and we will be get a proper log which ip address is accessing which malicious IP address is accessing, what is the region of that person and which browser is using, everything. So we will be getting a deep insight on it. Okay. So that's what we're using access log. Someone is telling, some interviewer is asking, so how to access, uh, who, who order accessing to my load balancer. So you can provide, uh, so we have an access log information. So we can enable that and we can push that access log into S3 bucket. See, if we select enable button and we'll be have an option S3 location. So we have to provide our S3 bucket name and whoever is accessing your uh, load balancer automatically it will create a log file then it will push to S3 bucket. Quite simple. Right. If you are getting a question, so how to protect my load balancer? Then you can tell I can uh, arrange a, uh, like a uh, what firewall. I can use access log who all are accessing to my so that you can tell. Right. Any doubt? No. So let me check my load balancer is active or not. Refresh. See now it is active, right? So I'll go to my load balancer and listeners. So this is my listen. This is my network load balancer listener rule. But we don't have any option to view and edit, right? See, we don't have a rule, multiple rule. But when it comes to application load balancer, we have a numerous rule, right? 
like uh, ip based path based host header based right but we don't have any rule for our, our network load balancer so let me get the public dns name then paste over here let's try okay so i'm getting the default page see nlb new f375 whatever it is and this nlb able to access my home page now right if you want to integrate a dns name custom domain name so purchase a domain name go to route 53 and then you can do it any doubts no doubts